there's the Dolby Theater where they filmed the Oscars. And there's Grauman's Chinese Theater. At least that's what we always knew it as. I think it's called the TCL Chinese Theater. And there's the Roosevelt Hotel in the center of the screen. That's been there forever. I haven't driven down Hollywood Boulevard in quite some time. Hello, everybody. It's Sunday, March the 19th, 2023, and I'm here in Hollywood, California, to check out two obscure locations that I've known about, but never knew exactly where they were. The first location involves the story of two men who both had the first name of Anthony. Let me tell you the story behind this photograph. The two men were Anthony Brancato and Anthony Trombino, but they're known to history as the two Tonys. They were two hoodlums out of Kansas City, and in May 1951, these two, along with three other cohorts, robbed the cash room of the mobbed-up Las Vegas Flamingo Casino. Well, the owners of the casino figured out who the robbers were, and so did law enforcement, and the two Tonys were arrested but out on bail, awaiting trial and living in Los Angeles. The head of the L.A. mob, Jack Dragna, ordered that the two Tonys were to be killed, because you don't steal from the mob. And so Dragna created a ruse that they wanted to see if the two Tonys would be interested in robbing a private poker game in Los Angeles that might net the mob as much as $40,000. The two Tonys took the bait and met up with Jimmy the Weasel Fratiano and another associate on a side street in Hollywood to set up the caper planned for that evening. It was August the 6th, 1951. But the two Tonys were instead shot and killed by Fratiano and his associate as they sat in their car. The 1948 Oldsmobile in this death scene photograph. And here is a video I made of the murder scene taken from the same vantage point as this photograph that was taken 72 years ago. The apartment building in this photo still exists. So this apartment building right here, its address is 1648 North Ogden Drive in Hollywood. And the white vehicle right in the middle of the scene is a Mercedes Benz. And that is parked exactly where the automobile was parked in 1951 when the two Tonys were murdered by Jimmy the Weasel Fratiano. You can read all about this if you Google the murder of the two Tonys. That sign right there says, Outpost Estates, established 1927. This is entering into this neighborhood.
All of this land was at one time owned by Harrison Gray Otis, and he sold it to a developer that built all these homes in this area and they all had to conform to a certain style. They had to have a plaster exterior and a red tile roof. And just like Hollywood land was promoting a neighborhood for building in Hollywood and they put up the Hollywood land sign. This housing development put up a sign about four years later in 1927 that said outpost and it was up on the top of the hill up there. This is very typical of the kind of homes you'll find in here. This is like a three-story home or a two-story home with a garage at its base. There's one of the original homes built in the late 1920s. So the outpost sign up on the top of the ridge up there, I think that's actually in Runyon Canyon Park or right adjacent to it. But that was put up in 1927, four years after the Hollywood land sign was put up. The Hollywood land sign went up in 1923, exactly 100 years ago. And the Hollywood land sign fell into a certain amount of disrepair by 1949, they, they had um, done some work to restore it, and they dropped the word land, and ever since then, it's just been known as the Hollywood sign. World famous, of course. Dolores Del Rio was a famous actress back in the 1920s who purchased a home up here. Here's another one of those outpost signs. Maybe I can get close enough to it here where you can see the, the letters being supported. Or the depiction of the letters being supported by the metalwork that held those word, those letters up. They were about 30 feet tall each and at the time they were put up, it was the largest neon sign in the world. And there's a sign that says right there saying Runyon Canyon Park. So I might as well take this and go up that way. So behind this gray car is a sign saying you can't park any time going up the hill. And down at the end, there's a sign saying you can't park anywhere down the hill. But right here, in between, is a little area where we all can park. I think it's about a, I don't know, quarter mile or more from the Runyon Canyon Park sign but it's not raining right now. 
I have my umbrella with me, but it looks like we're going to Runyon Canyon Park, which I meant to possibly do today anyway, but earlier it was raining and I certainly wasn't going to go in there in the rain. But I was looking online about uh, Runyon Canyon Park and they do allow dogs in there, but there are certain sections where they must be on a leash. And my understanding is, is that there are, there is a uh, animal control uh, personnel there frequently. And if you're in the park with your dog off leash or your dog does not have a license, you can get a ticket. So for all of you that might want to go to Runyon Canyon with your canines, uh, I would only do that if they were licensed and if you abided by keeping them on leash in the areas where they're required to be on leash. But this ridge up here that you're looking at in the middle of the screen, that's where the outpost sign was. And I'm gonna go up there and check it out. That sign was there from 1927 up till the beginning of World War II. Because in uh, 1942, a month or so after the bomb bombing of Pearl Harbor and the United States entry into the war, that big sign on the hill, you know, they, they didn't want that to stay there anymore because it might give enemy aircraft or surveillance aircraft or what have you might give them coordinates as to where they were. And they didn't want that to be a giveaway, just like my understanding is, is that all the airports that were on maps in the LA area didn't show up on maps during the war because we didn't want our enemies to know where, our, or where at least easily, where our airports were located. So this apparently is Desmond Estates Road and Mulholland Drive. And we're right at the, one of the entrances here to Runyon Canyon Park. Hopefully I can get in there. I don't know if it, the gate is a, uh, looks like you have to put a code in to open that gate, but it's just sitting there open. But I think this is where I want to go, is up here. But I'm just going to go right through this gate right here since it's... Since it's open. There's a, a bunch of rules that you must abide by. I saw those online too. But look at this, there's like a keypad here. So I don't know... If somebody's been kind enough to leave this open or not, but it's open. So there's the Hollywood sign right there in the middle of the screen. Right out here is the Griffith Park Observatory. Well, I just came from this ridge up at the top and uh, the outpost sign was not there. So I'm assuming it's either on that hillside there or this one over here. And you cannot reach it going this way. This stops right here. So now I've got to go back. I don't mind a little hike or a long walk. As I mentioned in my video that I did on Court flight, my last video, 
There's downtown uh, Los Angeles right there in the distance. And that tallest building is located on Bunker Hill. Well, there's where I came from, right there at the top. The highest point in this area, but the sign isn't there, so I have to check out a couple other areas. This will take a while to get there. Probably 25 minutes, we'll see. But that's okay, because this is a nice hike. And there's a couple of paved roads down here. Well, these are unpaved, but over there, there's a paved one. But I'm pretty much going back to where I came in the park, and I'm going to go in that direction and see if I can find the remnants of the old, dilapidated, and pushed-over outpost sign. I just asked that couple right there if the outpost sign was down this way. And by the way, this is a dog-off leash area in here. We just came through the gate that they're about to go through. And this is an off-leash dog area here. In fact, they had a dog off-leash. But they said the sign is down this way, which is good because otherwise I would have been going up over there. Which you can see those three like hillocks there. The sign is in, is in an area very similar to that. So I might have gone up there had I not known. But that'll save me uh, 40 minutes one way, probably. So it's not right here on this ridge. It's down lower somewhere. But we're going in the right direction. Looks like there's a bench up here. It's a nice vista point. But it's obviously a very obscure day. I believe that area in the distance with all those tall buildings in a row is Wilshire Boulevard. And so just looking back toward where I came from and I was on that peak, the uh, wire tower right in the middle of the screen. I believe I was on that peak over there, and now I'm over here. And I'll probably have to go down this way because I heard that the sign was down that way. And this is pretty steep right here, that's for sure. Well, I just came from up there where those, that couple is standing on the top of the hill. And I'm down here, and I think. The location of this sign is going to be right in the center of the screen. There's a chain link fence down there. I think I've seen that in another video. That's where I'm going. Okay, there's my first view of the metalwork right in the middle of the screen to the left of that big patch of dirt. That patch of dirt right there. There's part of the metalwork of the famous outpost sign. It's kind of raining a little bit, so I'm going to put this umbrella on, but here's the metalwork here up close. And then there's a, another letter out this way. It's kind of wet and slick, so I'm not sure if I'm going to go down into this area. I don't want to slip on my ass. but I wanted to see if I could find any of the letters. I'm sure I'll see remnants of the letters. But this is just the metalwork, and there's part of the foundation of this uh, outpost sign. Let me go down this way and see what's there. I was actually thinking of coming out here with a measuring tape and actually measuring the size of one of the letters, because I've heard 
One article said they were 30 feet tall. I think another one said 39 feet tall. And I wanted to measure one for myself, but I didn't bring a measuring tape. I didn't even know I was gonna to come to this location today, but I'm glad I did. So this right here, <clears throat> come down this way a little bit. And there's part of the letter. Right below that rock, you can see the curvature of the O and it goes all the way down there and then comes back up in the middle of the screen. It comes back up over there. of uh, dogs getting to know each other. One was probably a little bit dominant with the other, but I'm gonna come down here. <sighs> okay. So, there's one of the letters right there. In the screen, you can see the right half and the left half, and they're about, those letters are about, I would say that's uh, about 28 inches wide. That's just my guess. And look at these metal boxes that are still here. I think that held some of the, uh, well, these were neon lights and I'm not sure if the neon was housed in glass or if it has to be housed in glass. I've, I've seen nothing mentioned about that. Uh, but I can't believe it would be anything but glass because I think neon light requires glass, right? It'd be really interesting if I could find a, a round tube of glass up here. Because there would probably be one somewhere here. But it looks like we can see the remnants of three letters down there at the far end. So that this could have been P-O-O, -O, this is the O, S-T, outpost, because obviously you'd have to read it from left to right. And that's just my guess, because this is an O. And it's doubtful that this was the first O in outpost. It was probably the second. Yeah, I'm almost positive that's true because the first letter in the O was elevated quite a bit because of the slope of this hill. So that's that's pretty much a for sure. But here's a piece of pipe sticking out of the ground right there. If that was if that was loose, I'd just I'd take that with me. Let's go down a little farther and perhaps we'll see more remnants of this sign. Here's some metal work right here on the bushes. So something was right here. This tubing sticking up. There's part of a foundation or one of those electrical boxes or what have you. And there's the remnants of another letter. So yeah, this had to be the beginning of the sign here. O-U-T-P and then up there, O-S-T. But look at the fence here. This is kind of interesting. I guess there's a tradition of people coming up here and leaving their padlocks. That is the funniest thing. Huh. I wonder what that's all about. 
Look at this, just padlocks. All kinds of, all kinds of padlocks. This looks like a lockbox right here that a realtor might use to uh, put a key in. Oh, look at this. This is really quite funny. What a funny little tradition this is. And I don't know what it's for. Somebody put a dog dish out here. It doesn't really have much in it right now. But look at all these padlocks. And the whole area behind it is, well, this has got razor wire at the top and this is all fenced in. You can see the, the fence about 15 feet away going down the hill. So this, this must be private property back there and the owner does not want people coming in. Well, this is, look at, the, look at all these locks. And this is funny, look at all these pink locks that are all identical. That could be some kind of a memorial to somebody. Maybe a girl died at a girl's school and members of her class, all 20 of them came up here and put a lock on this fence. I have no idea what this, this is all about. But that, that is pretty interesting. Well, I just talked with a hiker and I asked her if she knew anything about those locks on the fence. And she said, yeah, it's a, apparently in Paris, they've got something similar, but I think they took that one down, but it's for couples. And it, they kind of put a lock up there to express the fact that they're in a relationship so it's a kind of a love story. So I'm, she sounded like she knew she what she was talking about. So I'm going to take her word for it. When I was going down this road, I noticed all these bushes that were so nicely maintained. And I'm thinking, well, that's got to cost the city a fortune to keep that up. And they all look so good. But then I came to this gate and apparently this is a residence of somebody. We're only about a thousand feet or so, maybe maybe a little more from where the outpost sign was, but it's kind of an interesting thing up here. They have a metal pig and a metal horse, and I don't know what that is, but there's a... <laughs> Let's see, I gotta get under here. I can't really see what that is, the one on the, the one that's right here in the uh, picture right there. I don't know what that is, but this is one big estate. The address is 3003, and I'm not even sure what this road is called. Here's my umbrella. So here is a map of Runyon Canyon Park, and I came, we're right here at this location here. When you come in, go down this paved road, towards your left, of course, and when you get down to this area, veer to the left, there's a gate right here, just like the gate that you entered. Uh, you're gonna veer to the left here on your way down and the position of the outpost sign was right in this location, approximately right in there. So just to reiterate, I'm here at Mulholland and Desmond Estates Road and when I got here I went in this gate here and went up this way. Well that's not the way you want to go if you want to see the outpost sign. You got to go straight ahead on the paved road. But it's a it's a wonderful little park and that was great exercise. It was a lot of fun and now I'm on my way back to my car which is down this road around the corner. It's about a half a mile down. Well I hope you enjoyed this video on two obscure Hollywood landmarks. We'll see you in the next one.